Hello, and welcome to the Loveology podcast, where we talk about love and life with laughter. I'm Ashley. And I'm Jason. He's the carefree one. She's the serious one. And, and we're, we're married. married. We have been since 2012, and we like to think of ourselves as a couple of loveologists. Not because we are the experts, but because we just love love. We enjoy studying and talking about it, so we thought, let's just start a podcast. A place where we can share what we have learned about love, relationships, and marriage. You can share what you've learned, and we can all grow together. So here we are. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey, what's going on out there in Loveology Podcast World? This is Jason coming in for another episode. What's up? What's up? Hey, boo thing. What's up? <laughs> what's up, baby girl? How you doing? I'm good. How about you? I'm feeling outstanding, man. I'm feeling amazing. Can't believe it. But uh, we got another another episode in the book. Yes, and we are super excited. What you excited about? <laughs> because you see me, you see this beautiful face. You like no, this smile. That's not it. That's not it? Oh, <laughs> man. See what I got to deal with? I'm excited because what? you know how we say we're not the experts? So well, we have an expert. Show, sure, dude. We got an expert <laughs> in the house. We got an expert in the house. Yes. Everyone, we have a real life marriage and family therapist. What? What's up? What's up? Talk to me. Hey. What's up? How you doing? Doing wonderful. Enjoying this beautiful day here in SoCal. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah man. It's, getting, it's a little warming up for us a little bit. You know, when we get in the high 70s, it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. No. I mean, but that's just how it, it is. Love you it. Know? Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, it's not so, hot to me. So cool. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, I, I'm originally from Southern California, born and raised, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. West Side. West Side. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I came into the field of marriage and family therapy just as a way to um, really help bridge the gap with families, mm-hmm. um, particularly you know families in the LA area. There's just a high stigma of divorce and breakups and all of that, and you know. Everybody has a colorful story. For sure. And there's ways to mend and blend it and to make it beautiful. And that's my job. That's right, what I do. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Yes, so we, we love it. Did we, did we catch your name? I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I do have a name. It's I don't know. Maybe you don't have one. You know what I'm saying? So I love. That girl. Yes, the girl that does marriage and family therapy, Maya Nicole Hernandez. Awesome. Just Maya. You just yeah. call me Maya. Just okay. simply Maya. Oh, yeah. That might be a little tag phrase for you simply maya jason make, put a t- make that a t-shirt you, simply maya yeah simply maya i like that <laughs> <laughs> we'll go for it okay well just um i uh, maya and i met through an organization called mocha moms yeah um, yeah i gotta give a shout out to the mocha moms okay. you know especially the la chapter la chapter <laughs> okay okay let me get a little shout out to the mocha moms all right um wonderful organization check it out they're nationwide so uh check that out um, so, yes, today we are talking about a very, very important topic. We are uh, talking about blended families. Okay. okay. Blend, you know what? On the, what was the very first episode we, we said we was going to be talking yes, about? Yes, I need to apologize to you all because, <laughs> yes, the very first episode we said, you know, okay, kind of ran down a list of things that we would be talking about. And we mentioned bl- um, blended families. And we have people that's been waiting for this for a very long time. <laughs> well, but you know what? We didn't, that's good that we didn't just push it out there right. you know it's kind of like bad boys three you know they could have just pushed it out there but mm-hmm. they want to make sure it was right right so we had to get the perfect situation <laughs> the perfect people and now we got it and here it is for you guys right yeah we want to give you quality right and Correct. so this was one thing that you know we couldn't talk about and so we wanted to just make sure that we could find a good person that could actually you know talk to you all um about this topic because it's very important so we want to give you the good stuff for sure <laughs> <laughs> so um so yes Blended families are very common mm-hmm. now. I think they're more common than um, people who have only been married um, once. What's, what's, is that true? Well, there is a growing trend mm-hmm. right now where people are um, cohabitating mm. um, before actually getting married or just cohabitating just in general. Like right. that marriages may not be a goal um, right. on the front end. And so the whole dynamic of co-parenting is has been brought to the forefront. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you think p- 
people are doing that more because of financial reasons, because of, you know, maybe maybe the finances is, you know, you living together, you can help on bills, split that Netflix account, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> definitely got to have the Netflix account split 50-50. Um, that and also just the the whole perspective of marriage mm. in general, mm. like people, you know, we see, especially for the millennial generation, um, we saw a lot of divorce Yes, mm-hmm. and whether it was our parents or family members. And so people are like, I don't want that marriage thing For sure, or they may feel like, uh, I do want to get married, but I just don't have the tools, mm. you know, to make it work. I need to know how to make this thing work before, you know, we're a very educated generation. Yeah. We're very diverse. So yeah. we want, we want the things to make it work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. dope. And, you know, when you're splitting that, that Netflix account, you're still going to do Netflix and chill. So that's where them babies come in at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Definitely. That's part of it. <laughs> so let's kind of define blended family. We, we're saying it a little bit, but for anyone who doesn't know what it means. Um, well, okay, she, well, might okay, as well give the definition. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> She's the expert. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, a blended family is typically when you have um, two parents and a child and the two parents split Mm -hmm. and then maybe one of the parents finds another partner Mm -hmm. or both of them find another Mm -hmm. partner. And so Mm -hmm. you've got uh, something like a bonus mom or a bonus dad. Mm -hmm. Ah, Mm -hmm. I like that bonus mom. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people are dealing with this, right? Yeah. A lot of people. And um, I think they also call it step families too. Sometimes they call it step family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, I, you know, the language that we put around the context of it, mm-hmm. I think it's important as well, because it's like step, well, step in what direction? Step down, <laughs> step up, what are yeah, we going? Yeah. So, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you prefer the term blended family? Blended yeah. uh, or bonus, bonus. mom, bonus, bonus yeah. dad, yeah. yeah. You had to bring that positivity. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can rock with that. Yeah, yeah. it's important. I yeah. like that. Yeah, it's just I the think language. think we should start using that, inf- that language, y'all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's dive right in right yeah. i just want to dive uh, in uh, sometimes i sing <laughs> i can't sing everybody know that but sometimes i just do it anyways yeah go for it <laughs> let's dive in okay so question number one what are some of the common challenges in a blended family uh definitely i would say people bringing their lives together mm-hmm. um you you've got in some cases, like I mentioned, four different dynamics happening, four mm-hmm. different upbringings. Mm-hmm. Um, and then those two couples are trying to blend uh, to make a family unit. Mm-hmm. And so the dynamic of trying to create what would look like the ideal home for your child, mm-hmm. um, that that's that's a challenge that people are facing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, you know, if it's like a baby mama, baby daddy type yeah, situation, yeah. you know, you got people, you know, that are a little upset because mm-hmm. uh, somebody has moved on. Right. Um, you know, and they're working through those issues and we want to help them work through. Right. And, and um, so those are those are the common things that we see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. OK, that's what's up. OK. And what are some of the challenges that couples may not, you know, anticipate before they get into this situation and then mm-hmm. it they get in and it's woof, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally unexpected things that come up. Um like hit, getting hit across the head in public. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking you know, about? You might be out with your boo and uh-huh. then baby mama come out of nowhere. Oh. I told you don't be getting with my man, you know. <laughs> so, you know, that might be a that, part of that might be one okay, what, situation, what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, definitely, um, I would say the child parent dynamic is something that they don't expect. Like if the child is receptive, Mm -hmm. you know, to this new parent, that could be something that they totally weren't Mm -hmm. looking for. Oh, my gosh, I'm an Insta dad. I'm an Insta mom now. This kid actually likes me. What do I do? Or, you know, the other side of it where the kid is like, well, I'm I'm not sure, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and and just the the feelings of uncertainty on all sides. Everybody's Mm -hmm. unsure because this is something totally new. Right. Right. Yeah. And what about like um, along those lines with the kids, you know, is there any time where like the kids may feel uh, loyalty to one parent? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then like it kind of stops them from making the attachment to the new parent. Yeah, definitely. Or this, uh, the bonus mom or dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and and it all it all goes back to language, like what we were saying. Um, if the if one of the parents is talking down about mm-hmm. the other parent, mm-hmm. it's going to split the child in half. Mm. So, um, particularly say if you have a, a a son and the mom is talking about the dad in, in a negative way, then the son sees himself the way that the mom is talking about. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's I, deep. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't think about that. Yeah, and so because they're they're a part of the parent, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful about the way that we talk about um, the child's pa- other parent, right? And and in doing that, um, that helps the child adjust more. So if you're speaking positively about the parent, if you're saying, you know, even if you may not agree, this person may have done some things in the past that you were just like, okay, that's a wrap. My hands are, I'm going to clean my hands of this situation. Right. But you have to remember that child is still 50% of that person mm. and, and showing respect and honor mm. to that person that's in your child. Mm. If you can't, if you can't, um, you know, come to a place of, of just, peace with that person right. just do it for the child right do it for the kids <laughs> yes i think that is just so important that mm-hmm. is so important and i think yeah, that's we're, a key we're, takeaway our yeah. parents are both divorced and i think jason um you said that um you know your your parents did a good job at like not saying a negative thing about your dad like, yeah your, your, <laughs> like your mom and you know your family my really grandma did a, yeah yeah and my that. mom was the same i didn't i, I didn't really have that you know, uh, fortunately, we didn't have that um, experience. But I can understand how somebody could be so wrapped up in their pain and hurt. Right. But you need to think about your child. Right? But but the key difference between me is I, my father left when I was two. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have any I, I didn't have any memories of him. Mm-hmm. So I, I wasn't attached to him like that. So they could have talked bad about him. Well, like, whatever, I, you know, I, I, I think just being it still would have affected you. Nah, I in just, a certain way, right? Nah, maybe. Nah, <laughs> not, it didn't. It didn't. It maybe subconsciously, maybe. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't feel anything until like I was older, to like twenty five. Like, man, I don't know how to tie a tie. Like, <laughs> yeah. damn it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my dad was supposed to t- teach me that, you know. Right. So uh, I didn't. I didn't feel any of that coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I I will give our parents that much that they definitely um, did not do that right Mm -hmm. so we that was one thing that we didn't have to deal with and and i could see how that could be very very difficult like you said you just split down the middle of trying to you know um i don't know (laughs) you know your mother is talking bad about your father it's got to be hard right Right. so yeah um yeah i think that is just such a good point okay anything else on that no ma'am no okay (laughs) um so how long would you say that it would take for blended families to kind of merge and kind of find their flow because i think a lot of times people they may not know how challenging it's going to be and of course we want to do things fast right yeah (laughs) yeah so it seems like it would take a little bit longer but people when they're in it they just think it's gonna happen fast yeah it's definitely not a microwave type situation (laughs) we are not making hot pockets (laughs) at all (laughs) um you you you're blending um you know lives and values Mm. together and so uh if you get the privilege of becoming a bonus mom or a bonus dad the privilege i love yes, it. Mm-hmm. the privilege <laughs> yes um you know j- being patient with that relationship you're not going to rush just like you didn't rush into the relationship mm. with the person your significant other or a friend even um you want it to develop authentically and genuinely mm-hmm. yeah what about they say you ain't my daddy what oh. about <laughs> <laughs> What about you're, that? You're not. You, you, you probably yeah. But that's okay. That's yeah. okay. You could you could just say you know what you're right. I'm not. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. not your dad, but um, I could be a bonus. I could be an addition to your life. Right. Um, or I want to. You know, express your your goodwill and intent and actually do it. Follow up. Mm. You know, and and be a a replacement. You know, mm-hmm. these kids have gone through a lot in their family. Their family unit has been broken apart. And so you coming in, if you're coming in as the mom or the dad, um, that replacement factor is is 
such a huge role. Yeah. And it's an honor to to stand in that place. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what but what if the biological father say maybe we should do it the other way, mm-hmm. <laughs> not man bash, but <laughs> what if um, you know, the biological dad is the one that's keeping the child majority of the time and the biological mother is very present you know in the child's life um so how how could we deal with that as far as the new mom what is her or the not the new mom but the bonus mom um as far as what her role is because she's not her mother and um she is not like there to replace but to add right yeah, yeah, and we definitely have to qualify that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, we don't we don't want like people coming in and out of the child's life. Right. Uh, so before before you establish that um, that it's going to be a co- good connection for your child, for you and your child, mm-hmm. um, once the person has been vetted, mm-hmm. um, then I would say, you know, allow allow the space for them to grow and establish what your values are Mm -hmm. together, sit down as a couple and say, okay, what are our values? Um, And then for the bonus parents, what are the values that we have? Are they aligning? And we need to, we need to find where they all align. Right. We, we focus too much on the negative Mm. and that's why we're just getting beat up, beat up, (laughs) beat up every day. And it's, 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 it's a lifestyle that we don't have to live. We can live prosperously. We can live happily in a um, co-parenting situation. Um, once you decide on what your values are. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just communication. Jason always says on this podcast, the communication. Don't steal my thunder. Oh, excuse, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I always, that's just, not just a podcast, that's just what I what I feel. All relationships, the foundation is communication and trust. Mm-hmm. All We talking about dogs. If you have a dog <laughs> and you can't trust that dog and it's not community, like if he eating and he not telling you, leave me alone and he bites you, you're going to get rid of the dog, maybe. You know, <laughs> same thing with your car. If your engine light doesn't work and all of a sudden it just go out on you it's not communicating with you and you can't trust it so you gotta get you gotta get rid of it you gotta get your new car so all relationships is the foundation of it is communication and trust yes that's what, that's what i feel because <laughs> yes. you know? it sounds like to me what you're saying definitely is that you need to have a conversation about values right and and finding out where they align and that requires conversating mm-hmm. <laughs> right and communicating yeah and writing them down mm. Mm. see because mm-hmm. the conversation that's cute that's <laughs> real cute <laughs> <laughs> but once you write it down everybody is very clear on what the values are and how we're going to actually like make them happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Take them, translate them from paper to production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is good stuff. I don't think that people, (laughs) I think people just merge. Right. And you know, they just jump in head first and like taking the time to like stop and think about the roles and think about the values is important and write them down. Right. (laughs) Absolutely. And if anybody needs help doing that, I do work with couples and families um, in helping them sit down, if, especially if it's you can't you're at a place in your relationship where you cannot, mm-hmm. you know, communicate without a third party. You need right. a neutral party, not somebody in your family or a friend because they're going to have a bias. For sure. Um, so, yeah. So if you want to give us an email real quick or something. Yeah, it's L-A-M-F-C-C coach at Gmail dot com or you can just go to my website which is lamfcc.com. Awesome. Yeah, because I think that's also important. Like, if you can't communicate or you don't know how to do this, reach out, get a therapist, call Maya, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to help you through this thing, because, you know, if you don't know how to navigate it, that's okay, but reach out and find a therapist and, and get them to mediate it and um, help you do this. Right. I think I think it's so key because we, we do go through a lot of uh, trauma, mm-hmm. uh, childhood, all that good stuff, you know, we're military, but it's a lot of individuals that wasn't in the military and they have PTSD mm-hmm. and they need the same help that we may need. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So it's important to uh, humble yourself and just, you know, it's okay to to talk to a therapist about mm-hmm. some things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I just want to say, like, uh, there is, you know, that 
fear apprehension that people have and so for that reason i'm also a coach mm. so you don't have to see me as a therapist you can see me as a coach i will coach you through the challenges right mm -hmm. and i think a lot of us do have friends that that try to help you through these situations mm -hmm. but they're not professional they're not <laughs> right. they're they're not they're not educated in this field they don't have the experience they just maybe went through their own situation and maybe they can help you out a little bit but it's best to have a a, a, a real coach mm -hmm. and a and a therapist and a, someone who's educated on the subject. Absolutely, yeah, and someone who has experience coaching people, right? You know, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> because that's the other part, right? You know, you have more experience in the actual, you know, doing it, right? Coaching, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, so, so what advice would you give to parents in regards to helping their children adjust to having non biological siblings? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, go on some play dates. Mm -hmm. um, make it fun. They meet kids all the time at school, new new kids, and mm -hmm. um, just in the environments that they're in, whether it's basketball practice or soccer or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, creating um, opportunity for those kids to bond through play. Mm -hmm. That is their language. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can't sit down, sit the kid down and say, okay, we're going to talk about, I want you to be friends with Emily now because she's going to be living with us. Right. Um, who is Emily? Right. <laughs> what? Right. She's my sister now. You know, it's kind of awkward. You don't just force the situation on a kid. Right. Um, just create the opportunities for them to bond. Right. Mm -hmm. Create the opportunities for them to bond. Yeah. And I, well, I guess kind of going back to what we were saying before, you know, this is going to take time, right? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, it just takes time. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you got to be patient with yourself. Yeah. You know, we we oftentimes lack self-compassion mm -hmm. um, because we we're such we're so driven for success. Right. Mm -hmm. if it's not if we don't see results, it's not successful. That's not true. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you could go from, you know, not being able to to communicate to, you know, hi, how you doing? Being able to be in the same room, right. playing, pulling out a game, you know, like Monopoly or, you know, um, what what are some some other games? Spades. I play Sp spades. Okay, spades. <laughs> yes. Pull out those spades. I'm going to bust Get everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Yeah. Um, what about if the child is resentful, um, toward the bonus parent because they just don't like that they're there, right? Yeah. <laughs> and their loyalties lie to their biological parent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't try to change it. Mm -hmm. mm. Allow that child to, as long as they're being respectful don't, now, you know, um, allow the child to feel what they feel. Mm -hmm. You know, you can even, um, I would encourage you to, um, have them write down their feelings if they're at that age where they can write it down they can verbalize it or like do an art project with them mm -hmm. um that allows them to express because that's ultimately all they want to do they want to feel heard mm -hmm. uh that kids are very resilient yeah oh my goodness like yeah. like diamonds like teflon they will yeah. <laughs> they will weather through some stuff you'll be amazed it's us we're the ones that right. that need the help that right, needs right. the coaching uh -huh. right so you said like an art pre or project or something so what if you see your daughter you know writing or drawing a punching bag of daddy you know what i'm saying like how do you talk <laughs> them through that you know yeah um you know if they are expressing like resentment like you said and the anger let them know you know it's okay you yeah. know we all have strong feelings about things sometimes mm -hmm. you know allowing them that space as long as they're not being violent or you know they're, they're, there's no uh, motives behind it um, yeah. other than them just wanting to express yeah, themselves keep that door locked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah don't be don't be living in fear but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, most of the time they just want they just want a space to express it and you know yeah. if you can if you can get them outside and go play a game um, get off the video games get off the social media let yeah. them be able to talk to you as their parent and just be a listening ear right. even if you have you know like strong feelings just like that child mm -hmm. you know they are 50 percent of you so uh they're they're exhibiting 
uh, what's a part of their DNA. Right. You know, so if you show them a different way, model what you want them to uh, do. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think just, you know, keeping hope alive that it can change. It, and it, will, change. And it will change. It will change. <laughs> Believe. <laughs> only, only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to take time. I'm all about, like, everybody just needs to, you know, just know that it's going to take time. I'm all about expectations. And like I said, I think that we all just really suffer from, like you said, microwave culture of like, oh. <laughs> We, we want this to happen right now. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just going to take time. These are some big feelings, like you said. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take time. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what about discipline? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. this is a Ooh. really big topic. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I feel like, you know, <laughs> right. men, <laughs> me in particular, I sh- I'm the disciplinarian, right? Mm-hmm. And... I was in a relationship before we got married. Yeah. I was in a relationship. Let's talk about that. You know, we are talking yes. about that. Yes. She's like, come on. Let's talk about your out. blended family that you had for a while. <laughs> I did. I was all on Facebook, you know, engaged. taking pictures. <laughs> we was engaged. And I had, she she had a daughter. And she let me discipline her daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, that I should be able to discipline um, uh the children that's going to be under 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 my household right Mm -hmm. i just i just i just feel like that's fair i mean i guess different situations have different results so uh, what's your your take on it well what what does that what did that discipline look like well you know (laughs) (laughs) let's define discipline right you know you know uh you know sometimes you know you know, it'll be some timeouts, right? But okay. sometimes you might get a little tap tap. You know, get a little oh, tap tap. Okay. <laughs> little baby, little tap tap. She was what about three years old? You know, mm-hmm. get a little little tap tap. You know, and then the, you know, maybe the you know raise my voice just a, just a smidge, just to let you know I'm, I'm the presence is here. You know, <laughs> yeah, the presence, presence is here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So nothing nothing too crazy. You know, getting a switch from outside like back in the day or. You know, uh, I don't know, wet belt. Have y'all heard of wet belt? No. Wet belt? Never. Yeah, man. No. <laughs> that sounds a little abusive. Hey, it might be. But I, 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 ain't never, I never got, I heard of it. That's okay. all I'm saying. Okay. So, heard through the grapevine. Through the, I heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> yes. So what, what's, your, what's your take on that? Um, I would say, you know, the first, first things would be to make sure that the child feels loved. Mm-hmm. Discipline is just an extension of love. Mm -hmm. And that being said, you want to make sure that the child is safe, Mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, physically safe. Mm -hmm. And so sit down with your partner, sit down with the with your um, co-parent and decide, okay, what type of discipline is most effective for this child? Mm -hmm. Is it taking away the video game or cutting off the Mm Wi-Fi and just saying, oh, man, you know, oh, the the phone company is messing up. I don't know what's (laughs) happening. Oh, man. You know, especially if you have a teenager or kids that are really into that, um, timeouts are good. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, giving them the space to be honest. You mm-hmm. know, uh, we want to jump right into, especially if they do something wrong, it's like, ah, oh, you know, raise their voice. And then they're going to want to hide and run, you know, and it, right. it, it kind of puts a distance in the relationship and it, it move, it pushes back the trust, Yes, mm-hmm. you know, yes. for them. And so, you know, okay, that wasn't okay for you to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to talk about it when I calm down right. <laughs> right. or I'm going to call your father or your mother and we're going to talk about it and decide what discipline is going to be taken. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So it, do you have uh, like an opinion about whether or not it should be the biological parent that's doing like the actual discipline, even if it is just enforcing these rules that you all have come up with as far as like, oh, you're going to time out. Does that need to come from the biological parent or can it come from the bonus mom or dad? I think it depends on where they are in the relationship. If they are, if they are ready to be together, they're cohabitating, you know, then yes, whatever the agreement is with the biological parents, I think that Mm -hmm. it's important um, for all parties, you know, if, if possible, we're talking about marriage, Mm -hmm. you know, for everybody to sit down and decide, okay, what 
what discipline looks like right. for this household mm-hmm. um, because you can't control what goes on in somebody else's household. For sure. And, you know, so just having a conversation, sitting down and, and yeah. deciding what that's going to be. I can see how that can get still get very messy, though, because mm-hmm. like Jason say, we and you divorced, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, oh, he just can't even think about that. Yeah, that's I don't like that. Right. <laughs> you and I and I was remarried to another man. How would you feel? You know, especially since we have a daughter. Ain't going to happen. See. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Ain't going to happen. But he's, but we're together. He's staying, she's staying with me. But see, (laughs) but see, you talked about it. Yeah. You said, okay, we we have a daughter and, you know, uh, what do we want to how do we want to handle this with this new person this bonus person coming in yes so, so i can't it, even think about that well so y'all y'all like, gonna be together right. okay yeah. <laughs> so that's so it's like but, yeah uh-uh. yeah that's but I, i'm just i know that a lot of men would probably have that feeling of like well no i don't want another man discipline my child nah. so i mm-hmm. i just still feel like that you know people can have some really intense feelings about that yeah <laughs> and they should yeah. and they should so so you know you have to decide you know write it down what is appropriate and and like i said um if something happens in the presence of a bonus parent um okay that wasn't you tell the child okay that was not right for you to do it wasn't appropriate so we're gonna wait and call your mom you know right. and see what she wants to do or right. what your dad wants to do you do not take don't step into that spot. Yeah, mm-hmm. you go. You gonna come up <laughs> missing a few fingers and some, some toes. Or right, something. right. Okay, well, Stay missing in your all lane. together. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Yeah, I got to. Okay, so it just sounds like you're just saying just to uh, wrap it all up is you know everyone needs to talk about it. We all need to agree. Yeah, all parties involved. We all need to agree, and you know. It is what it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I, yeah, I can't see nobody disciplining my my kids, boy or girl. Period. Okay. Yeah. But I, I know that I, I feel like you would be in the picture, right? But if listen, it'll be very I'm difficult. Be front, front and center in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> it would be very difficult as I was dealing with the situation where the dad was around every so often, and then he wanted to try to tell me like the stepdad is doing way more than the um, than the biological father, right. and then he come try to tell me that oh he can't discipline the children well. You're not here. Right. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just throwing out case some different by scenario. case scenario. No, 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 I feel you. Yeah. I feel you on that. <laughs> it's case by case scenario. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's another good point. Just it, every scenario is different. Yes, right. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I got a question. I okay. know we may be going to touch on it, but since we're here. Jason right? likes to jump ahead <clears throat> sometimes. What's up with uh, how can you protect, uh, like, let's say, we, same scenario. She's with somebody else, right? I got my daughter and my son, right? I mean, she got my daughter and my son. How can I protect my kids from sexual abuse? Oh, yes. This is a really good question. Um, (laughs) First thing is it doesn't matter who the person is. They could be um, in your family. Mm -hmm. Um, You could have known them for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody be alone with your child. Mm. Mm. You know, um, unless that person like, you know, it's a grandparent or that can be trusted or Mm -hmm. um, I I believe nowadays, you know, have video cameras in the room, Mm. (laughs) you know, um, around the house because you want to make sure that that child is safe. If you have to question, will my child be safe with this person? You probably don't want to leave them with that person. I'm probably going to do that anyways. What? <laughs> Question is my child gonna be safe <laughs> with somebody yeah. else, period. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's not me, you know? Yeah, that's true. And and yeah, I I could totally see that and you know, putting them in a, a public setting, mm-hmm. you know, if they're gonna be with another person um that's outside of your presence, you know, like they have a lot of um, play centers and stuff where you can they can take kids to if you wanna spend time, family member wanna spend time or the bonus parent wants wants to spend time, you can really see the interaction and how the child is responding to the person. Mm. You know, that's a tell. But how but how do I protect if she gets remarried and how can I what can I and I'm not you know, I'm not in the household with mm-hmm. them. What can I do to protect it? this dude? Maybe a, a pedophile or something. You know what I'm saying? How can I? How what what do I do for that? For yeah. for us, for the guys out there that's 
you know, mm-hmm. dealing with that. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah. Run a background check. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you I know, mean, if you if you're in a situation where you're like, OK, I can I just don't know right. what who this person is. If, if if the mother's child is choosing to be with someone like that, that's that's alarming. That's a red flag mm-hmm. all I mean, by itself. But maybe she don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, so I would say the best thing is. Go meet the man if possible. Yeah. You know, have the conversation. I'm not trying to get in your business, right. but, you know, you're a new person coming into my child's life. And talk to the mother first before you before you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't jump over the fence to just yeah. to talk to him. You know, yeah. talk to the mom and, and get the details worked out and just express yeah. your concern, um, you know, from a, from a healthy space. Yeah, and I think that's like, if you reverse that, I think that's a good piece of advice for the person who is coming into the family, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, to mm-hmm. say, oh, you know, I know that I'm coming into, you know, and, and go to the other biological parent is like, I want to meet you. Definitely. You know what I mean? I'm serious about, you know, being in this family. I'm, I'm, you don't have to be afraid of me. Like I'm a good person. Right. I think that would be like really cool. You right. know, right. like if you take that step and you know, like if a guy was dating me and he just took that step to go talk yeah. to you yeah. and, and introduce himself. You yeah. Know? So I think that's, you know, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great point. Yeah. Also, uh, I was just thinking about, you know, uh, fathers you know it's important to have a relationship with your children right because if your relationship is you know up to par then they will tell you if something crazy is going on mm-hmm. right you know what i'm saying Absolutely. so i was just thinking about that like yeah that's why it's good to go pick your children up and talk to them and text them and <laughs> say i love you and <laughs> give them flowers and stuff you know have mm-hmm. that have that relationship with them mm-hmm. yeah yeah and then with social media too you know you can see who people are connected with Right. That'll tell you right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Just based on their connections. Are they, you know, within your network? Don't don't be stalking people now. (laughs) I know people do it. Create a fake account, all this kind of stuff. (laughs) You know. Right. (laughs) But if you just kind of you just kind of want to get a just a quick little overview, you Mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also I don't want to go too like far off, but it's also making me think about as far as like, should there be any boundaries as far as like. You know, if it's not the biological father, should he give it give a um a little girl a bath? You know, no. no. <laughs> Are we? Let's talk. Oh, let, yeah, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, you know, not to say that he would do anything, but it's still it just still seems kind of inappropriate. Maybe I don't know. I, don't. I think it depends on when that person comes into the child's life. Mm-hmm. If they're coming in and the baby is is newborn. You know, mm. and they are standing in the place of the father. Yes. Then absolutely. Right. You know, um, if they're coming in, the kid is like, you know, nine or ten years old, eight, <laughs> eight, nine, ten. They're able to take their bath themselves. I don't they don't need there's no reason. Yeah. Right. Like mm-hmm. there has to be just cause right. <laughs> for yeah. anybody to be near the bathroom. <laughs> right. When something like that is happening. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it just cuts down on confusion. Like me and Jason's not gonna get divorced, but I'm just using us as a scenario. I don't even like <laughs> using us as a Let's scenario. Let's do somebody else. <laughs> yeah. A couple couple A. Okay. Right. A couple A. Yeah. You know, like if you know I, I guess I'm just I'm still thinking about what I would do personally. Okay, go for it, go for it. And so, you know, if I was to get remarried, I would just I wouldn't wanna like there to be any reason for any kind of confusion right so it's just like no mommy gives the baths right yeah. like yeah, definitely <laughs> and it's right. just easy because your child could get confused maybe right? right like something could happen and maybe they could get confused so like let's just uh that's all the baths too that's boy, uh, boy or girl yeah boy or yeah. girl yeah. absolutely definitely. absolutely yeah. so just all the, that's why I said all the baths yeah. <laughs> like we just don't want any problems just we work don't, on he need to work but, on being a chef <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, take you, care of the, take care of the dishes and 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 take and care of the cooking. Yeah, I'm doing this over here, right? right? Cuz like I said, the kids can get confused and it's just like there's no reason. Why not? Let's just not even have that scenario, you know, in play at all. Yeah, right. and to balance it out the dads. If the dad is the one that's the primary caretaker exactly. and a woman's coming in, let if he's the one that's been taking care of the kids, yeah. He's the one that's doing the best. That yeah. is, I mean, that's definitely key because, you know, you know, most, I don't know, I'm speaking from my perspective, most men, 
um, are, are not the ones that's giving the baths and they're not the ones that's doing that type of stuff, uh, reading bedtime stories maybe, but you know, mm-hmm. I do, I, I, I do the baths, you know, right. you know, I read the stories and all that good stuff. So I will continue to, to do that. Mm-hmm. But some, some, some guys, they don't do that. So they'll just let the bonus mom do do all of that. Mm-hmm. And I think again, it goes back to keeping your relationship tight with that, with, the, with your biological children, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, what would be your best piece of advice for dealing with uncooperative exes? Um, baby mama drama, baby daddy drama. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. The ex, the case of the ex. Um, <laughs> you definitely want to uh, sit down, have mm-hmm. a conversation mm-hmm. prior to you know your relationship going to the next level, and these people meet you know, your children and everything, kind of, kind of give them a heads up. Right. Hey, just out of respect, not out of, um, you're obligated to do that. Right. You know, um, but in the case where somebody is going to be interacting with their child, Mm -hmm. this new person coming into their life, they, they should know. Um, and just let them know, Hey, this is where it's going. And we want to be as respectful as, possible you know you go to a job every day and respect people that you do not like Mm -hmm. so that lets me know that you are capable Mm. (laughs) you are very capable of doing this Mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm. and i know a lot of people you know out there and this to this podcast is going to have a lot of questions and we do have a live discussion on wednesdays so make sure y'all 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 chime in on wednesdays uh it'll be uh, on facebook uh 6 p.m pacific 8 p.m. Central and 9 p.m. Eastern Facebook Live. We'll check y'all there mm-hmm. on Wednesdays. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and and so I guess like if they were just a totally just bitter, I'm just not over <laughs> their um, ex at all. Um, well, the ex is not over them. What you know, I guess is maybe they should just go to therapy, right? <laughs> Or something <laughs> what would be because sometimes I have been you know experienced that before where it's like you know they just didn't want to let let the guy go and it was they was just trying to make it horrible for the new woman you got your tire slipped or something no you got what, what, what's your I'm, I'm curious you know sometimes we do personal nah, put, well, so what, what's your experiences on that well I shouldn't say that <laughs> I think the experience that I had was that she was um, just very financially tied to him. Mm. So that was. So he was paying a cell phone bill, car note, stuff like that. Well, yeah, because, okay, so I'll just go ahead and give like a couple of situations and telling his business, but whatever. <laughs> Jason, like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so he was the breadwinner in their relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, she was just very used to being taken care of and mm-hmm. she just didn't have to pay for anything. Mm-hmm. And so when they broke up, she was just, they did have a child together. But they wasn't married. They right? weren't, br- they weren't married. They were cohabitating. But womp, she, it, womp, <laughs> womp. <laughs> If you're not married and you, that's what you expect. It's over with, baby. Yeah. You know, just pick up your pick up your bags and get get the move on. Find yeah. somebody else. Yeah. You, you might need to go to work, right? <laughs> it's a wrap. Y'all not married, right? He, she doesn't. She's not uh, entitled to alimony, but I understand they got children. But they together. have a child together. But but you can't. You know, you can't be a princess all your life and expect this guy to take care of everything for you. Yeah. Right? Am I wrong well, for saying that? <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. I love it. This is yes. Well, it was. Actually, I agree. <laughs> we were all kind of young, so it was actually kind of like she was like a fish out of water. Like she didn't know how to take care of herself, kind of. So he, you know, she basically um, would still be calling him for money. You know, um, actually took a, one of his credit cards and charged it. And how she take know, the she, credit card? I don't. I think she still had it, right? Like why they, he didn't get it back from I, her? I don't know. He sounded like he, he was, was doing a little some some on the side. Maybe, maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> he was very upset about it, right? But he didn't really know how to approach this situation because cut it's the like card she's off. She's the mother. Well, he did that, but now she's charged his card. So get do I call support. the police on my baby mama? Like, no, you know what I mean? Yes, Jason, <laughs> identity theft. <laughs> 
I'm not paying. What she? Because what she charging? You know, charging clothes. I think it was like five hundred dollars or something oh, like that. Oh no, man, it was a, you know. But still, <laughs> so when I was saying about the bitterness, I've had friends that like where the woman was very much um, still in love with the guy, mm. and she was just calling them, calling them all the time. But my personal experience, it was more of a financial thing, and because. Um, they had a child together and she didn't really know how to take care of herself. You know, mm. the lights were turned off. He has to pay for the light bill. Right. And she knows that he's going to do it. Yeah, that's, that's that's terrible. Because she has the child majority of the time. So he doesn't want his child and, you know, sitting in the dark. So it's a complicated situation. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't know. That's why I said I guess they just need to go to therapy because I didn't he didn't know how to like deal with this. Yeah, you know? I think that's the best cuz cuz me I'm automatically thinking like, shoot, I'm about to get a lawyer, I'm about to get custody of my kid, but that might not be the best situation. That might not be the best thing to do, right? So the best thing to do is start off with therapy, right? Yeah, um and then I would say First off, for the men, choose wisely. Yeah. <laughs> we just, look, look I, just previous episode, episode 45 it's about choosing a partner. and 46 is choosing your mate, yeah. right? So yeah. make sure you listen to that episode, right? Yes. But we're here to help people, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So if you find yourself in that situation, I would say, um, you know, for the, the person that didn't want the relationship to end, whether it's the male or the female, Take that energy. You got a lot of energy. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Take it and put it in within yourself. Put that love back yeah. that you lost. You feel like you lost something, but you need to put it back in yourself. Pour it back into yourself, whether it's going back to school or mm. getting educated to be able to take care financially of this child. Um, going to therapy. Mm -hmm. Getting support. Right. Mm -hmm. Call upon your your village, your network. Yes. You will make it. You're gonna be all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Yeah, that's very important for sure. Yeah, just just give it back to yourself. Don't yeah. You just run around Go bitter to church, all the time. You know <laughs> Go to church. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what is one of the most important things you um, feel like is needed to help make a blended family work? If you just get those. Highlights of like what 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 do you really need? Love is number one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely love. Um, I would say also um, common activities, mm. fun things to do. Mm -hmm. People love to um, to have teamwork opportunities, like right. if it's going to the go kart place yeah, or yeah. swimming. Yeah, increase the activities, the fun things, and things will the conversations will be able to be had right mm -hmm. you know so yeah, the bonds yeah. will, will grow naturally like you said earlier and not, not just blended families i know that's what we're talking about but also you know families that are, have a, the same mom and dad can do more things like that to build our bond you yes. know what i'm saying we we could do more things go to the park together and go to you know ride our bikes and stuff like that so mm -hmm. yeah that's that's key for every relationship yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Definitely communication and writing down mm -hmm. what the values are. And um, also, like, if there are, certain, there are certain rituals in your family that you like to do, like everybody goes to watch, to see the Christmas lights during mm -hmm. Christmas time, mm -hmm. you know, keeping that a part of your family unit, mm -hmm. um, even with a bonus mom or bonus dad coming in, you know, so everybody can, can feel appreciate it and a part of you know and allow allow the kids to contribute too. let's so say you start a new family unit okay um what do what do we want our family to look like let's create some family goals mm -hmm. you know we, everybody talk about relationship goals and stuff mm -hmm. like that okay these are our blended family goals right that's good uh, mm -hmm. d you know nothing too nothing too strenuous but something you know like i would say two or three things that everybody can agree upon and um what they want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dope. Awesome. And so we started the conversation off by, you know, speaking about positivity and um, let's, what are some of the positive things um, 
when you are involved in a blended family because i think a lot of times like you said earlier we focus on the negative right Mm -hmm. (laughs) but there's some positive things that come from blended families right Right. so what do you what do you think (laughs) yeah i i would say like you know um for the the absent parent you know um if a child didn't have their mother or their father um and then they get that bonus parent and they get to experience you know maybe going ice skating they've never gone ice skating with their parents before or daddy daughter dances or fishing those types of things like you get to experience those things with these kids and um it's just it's just an amazing opportunity to stretch yourself Mm -hmm. and grow um I believe that our generation is very um, altruistic Mm -hmm. and we want to. Hold on. What's that word mean? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Volunteering. Oh, awesome. We want to make our communities better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want to see better communities and it starts at home. We could go to the Boys and Girls Club and volunteer and things like that. But if you get blessed with the opportunity to become a bonus mom or a bonus dad, you could put that right there in your home and make your community a better place. Nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I like it. Mm-hmm, for sure. <laughs> so, so what 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 is what is your take on um, knowing the 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 other other bonus mom or dad like childhood upbringing? How important is that in blended families? Oh yeah, it's everything. It's mm-hmm. everything. Um, especially like them being aware, you know, uh, of how their upbringing has shaped the way that they view. Um, a family unit should look. Mm -hmm. And then also, this is definitely not a conversation to have in front of the kids. (laughs) It's it's for adults only. Kids don't, you don't want kids to um, take on stuff that they shouldn't be. So, you know, having that conversation with your partner, Mm -hmm. um, this is what my life looked like growing up. And um, this is what I would like to see. Cause you don't have to relive that, you know, Sometimes we'll just like unconsciously do it um, just because it's in our in our background. But you can change the narrative. Rewrite your story. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Yeah. Well, back to that positivity thing. I just kind of wanted to mention that I do have a friend that said that like she loved being in a blended family. <laughs> and she said she kind like she was growing up in a blended family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Her dad, uh, both parents remarried. OK. And so she so she had a bonus mom and a bonus dad. Yes, and okay. bonus siblings, you oh, know, wow. and she was just like, I just felt like it was just more love for me. It's just more people that loved me. That's yes. dope. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. I, I get to have, you know, another sister. I get to, you know, so their relationship worked out really well, yeah. you know. I'm sure they had, you know, spats here and there, but for the most part, it was a completely positive experience for her. Yes. You know, mm. yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I just want to, you know, throw that out there for anybody who may be struggling at this time right. and not feeling like there's any hope because i know some some ladies out there that just will not get in a relationship because they're so probably f- just afraid of, mm-hmm. of of being in a blended family and mm-hmm. you know maybe that man uh dictating how they should run their their daughter or their son what, always, you, what's your know. take on that for the ladies that are just <laughs> afraid like no i'm not gonna get married until they get out of high school yeah yeah um yeah that word you said dictate that just really stood out to me because yeah. that's that's what we call toxic masculinity mm-hmm. <laughs> when um in a partnership you yes. know one person whether it could be the male or the female it could be there could be oh yeah toxic <laughs> femininity too <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, you know, it's a partnership, co mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. We're doing this together. So a lot, there's a um, co-ops. You guys heard of co-ops? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in businesses, you got different businesses coming together and they're they're working together for a goal or whatever it is that they're doing. They may have different belief sets mm-hmm. and um objectives but they come together for a common goal and so if you if you can look at it from that perspective you know allow yourself to come into community yes with the opportunity Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes love it okay well so we have some listener questions they ain't listened yet (laughs) (laughs) go ahead okay 
<laughs> All right. So we asked some of our listeners um, what kind of questions they would have for you in regards to blended families. And we asked them in our Patreon group. So if you're a part of Patreon, you already have this question. You had a chance to ask some questions. So shout out to our Patreons out there. Yeah, Appreciate it. We appreciate really it. love you guys. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> and they, their Patreons are here to support us and help, you know, find, help us financially so we can push out more uh, content, right? Some more creative content. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to become a Patreon, all you have to do is go to loveologypodcast.com. Look for that button, pick a tier and join us. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Listener questions. Question number one. What is good advice for a blended military family on sea duty? Yeah, so that basically uh, means that the the parent is kind of working certain hours, extended mm -hmm. amounts of time, and then they're leaving the child maybe with the the bonus mom or bonus dad. Yes. For sure. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, definitely. Like like we said in the beginning, vet. Anybody that is going to be having contact with your kid, vet them. That means like thoroughly check their background, thoroughly um, get an understanding of what family looks like for them, what mm -hmm. what they look to contribute to what you all are building. Mm -hmm. um, if once you can answer those questions, it reduces your anxiety because mm -hmm. you know what you're going to be getting right and then the other person also knows like what what do i really have to offer mm -hmm. you know so um definitely walk through that process of um finding out what the background is of that person what they're looking to contribute mm -hmm. and then also create some activities like make a schedule mm -hmm. kids love routine they need it it yes. keeps the tantrums down it keeps the <laughs> it keeps that the house flowing because people people need sleep these yes. days they need Shoot. peace yep. and serenity <laughs> parents Shoot, i need a schedule baby <laughs> <laughs> keep my tantrums down <laughs> you know I, we're not talking about anything rigid or or anything like that but some a loose schedule so the kids can know what to expect whether they're with the biological or the bonus. Right. And, and you know, I, I need a schedule. When you go volunteer, I need to know what time they're eating, mm -hmm. what time they, mm -hmm. you know, uh, going to bed, nap times. You know, definitely, you know, even I need that. So if you're going away, when we're talking about specifically sea duty, sometimes mm -hmm. you're away for, you know, months. You yeah. know, uh, it could be a couple of days. It could be months at a time. So you yeah, definitely need a some type of schedule. Yeah, and I think, again, like communication as a person that's been in the Navy and, um, you know, deployed. I didn't have a child at the time, but I was mm -hmm. around other women that had children. And I know um, there, this was a female that asked this question. I think the fear is being disconnected from your child, like mm -hmm. emotionally, because you've been gone for so long, too. Um, I don't know if um, she was, like, afraid that, like, she – you know, feel like her place, she was going to be replaced. You can never be replaced. You're, you're always mommy, you know, but you know, that definitely is a struggle for women in the military when they go away. I mean, yeah. women would be in the bathrooms crying, you know, cause yeah. they miss their babies. So, you know, I would say make those moments count, right. When you do have time with your child and, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that connection is strong. Um, and, you know, communicate with the, the, the parent that the other biological parent that is there, you know. Yeah. 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 And video chat. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. Yeah. Video yes. chat. You yes. can just like pull it up on your phone mm -hmm. and <laughs> you can see what's going on. Right. You mm -hmm. know, also having the kids involved with uh, activities that are in the community. So there's other accountability checkpoints. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't see Johnny at, you know, soccer practice today. Yes. What's going on? So then you could kind of like have, um, Hey, 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 what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, I do I do like the video chat. You can also, like you said earlier, have video monitoring the rooms, you know, and you can just pop in every so often. Hey, girls. Hey, guys. You know, yeah. and just pop in. Or you can read a bedtime story through the video yeah. monitor. Yes. That, that they technology have so much is stuff important. Now. Yeah. yeah, especially like thinking about deployment, though, because um, sometimes you don't have access to the video stuff, but you got. I forgot, y'all. 
Navy or Air yeah, Force. Yeah, the know. Navy we didn't have. Air Force we top notch. Whatever. We all the high speeds, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we're on a ship and we don't have all that that fancy stuff. But you know, you can teddy bears. You can record your voice on a teddy bear. They would do that in the Navy. Yeah. Um, they got know, books now books. that yeah, books you can record your voice. You can and record read your book. voice. So the point yeah. of just like using technology in some way to keep those connections. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Next question. Uh, back to the the topic of discipline. How do you get comfortable with someone else disciplining your child? And this listener also mentioned that um, she had gone through a difficult marriage where her child went through a lot, and she's just very protective of his child of her child as a result of that. So yeah, uh, the word comfortable really stood out because it you know. If there's apprehension there already, it sounds like she's she's not comfortable. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, maybe not putting your child in that situation just yet. Mm-hmm. Um, really, like, evaluating the situation. I wanted mm-hmm. to get your take on it as a father because that's that's kind of like, that's a tough, that's a tough spot. So, so if, like like I said earlier, we, we, we kind of discussed this earlier, I, 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 I want to because I'm going to be there. See, I'm the type of father. I'm going to be present, like, daily, multiple times a day. We're going to be in communication. I'm going to be communicating with my daughter and my kids. So I can be available to discipline. So I don't I don't, I don't, don't need you to touch my kids. We're good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but what about, like, mm-hmm. simply, it doesn't have to be physical because most people would advise not to spank, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people would. So well, we got to talk about it. We got to have a conversation on how we – we discipline you know how 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 we're gonna do it what's the rate how long the timeout will be or or whatever you know yeah so your Mm -hmm. thing is you don't want any physical interaction but can he put her in timeout yeah he can put her in timeout but like i said we got to have a conversation on what that time limit is Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like is it dark you know we just got to go through a lot of Mm -hmm. it's just I'm just saying, y'all. If y'all gonna try to get my wife, it's gonna be some problems. So don't even don't even worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, we gonna we gonna be working together a lot. I'm gonna need a lot of therapy. You hear me? So nah, yeah, it's gonna. I, I don't even know what to. I, I no. So that's my mind. No, don't 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 discipline my child. I deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and then the the timeout thing mm-hmm. um, is their age. Mm-hmm. So the number of minutes you go by is by their age so if the child is two years old you're not going to put them in time out for 10 minutes because right. they will have forgotten <laughs> why that? they're there <laughs> <laughs> and you don't hit the restart button all over again <laughs> so what do you do you remember some of the the limits roughly like two years old two minutes three years old three minutes is yeah, something yeah, like that? yeah yeah that's what she's saying mm-hmm. it's, that's what it is oh, okay yeah. based that's, on yeah. their that's age. good to know a minute for the year oh yeah. i didn't know that I think I told you that. Nah, <laughs> maybe, maybe she told me I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I read this question, the comfortable part stood out to me too. And I'm just thinking about it as a woman. I, she didn't go into detail on, um, you know, what a lot was with right. the, you right. know. So if the, if the child is, you know, I don't know if there was like some abuse going on or anything, but it's like, well, yeah. If it was me personally, I would have to do the discipline. Like, I would just, if I don't feel yeah. comfortable, like you said, you know, she needs to get, like, if you're not comfortable yet, then it's not time to let them discipline them, right? And right. she's trying to, mm-hmm. seems to me she's trying to force force it. She she wants to let him do it, right? Yes. Discipline the child, but I'm, I'm just like, eh, I don't know. I, I, I would have to, like, know what happened, you know? Yeah, there's the not previ- a lot. Yeah, with the previous marriage, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, I mean, if she's feeling really protective, maybe it was just a lot of bad stuff that was happening. So, so basically, she need to call up Maya and you know they need to get, that, <laughs> get that therapy session going. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, for sure. But I, I, I feel like as of right now, if she's not comfortable, 
you're not comfortable, you know. Yeah. And yeah, I'm absolutely. the I'm the protector of my child, you know. Right. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I will be disciplined disciplined. But I think it's just important that you do, right? You don't let the child run over or the the bonus parent. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so the last question was um it's kind of a paragraph. Let's see. <laughs> so it said I just recently or oh, just recently my my son's mother and I div- got a divorce and now she wants joint custody of our son. I have no problem with that. I have also been dating someone in the years that she and I were separated. How do I go forward with the blended family relationship? Also visiting him out of state without my girlfriend getting upset. Okay. That's a a lot. (laughs) Let me. (laughs) Bring up your blended family calculator. (laughs) 2237. That's a lot lot of information there. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they're asking about joint custody Mm -hmm. Um, and the the other parent is out of state. Is that? Yes. The child. So this, I think this was another military friend. Uh, So this sort of thing happens, right? A lot in the military. So, um, so yes, he probably got stationed someplace else and, and his mother of his child is um, in another state. So I, the way I interpreted this question was just like, well, how do I just begin with the blended? Like, how do I start? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what is the first step to start this blended family? Therapy. Call I- Maya. <laughs> 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 that's, that's how you start. I'm I'm in another state. I need to visit my son who's in another state, right? Um, and so just just how do I, how do I? Because there's so begin? many layers. How do, how do I? There's yeah. so many layers. How do I begin to do this? Yeah, there's there's the question is is full um, in terms of what she's trying to do, but the specifics there's so many things that we don't know, and right. so um, I'm just gonna try to answer this to the best of my ability. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And um, the first you have to go step by step. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you got a divorce. And you want to have joint custody. There's, you know, I'm not a divorce lawyer. So oh, they, they do have joint custody. Oh, they do have joint mm-hmm. custody. Okay. Um, and so this person has been dating somebody for a number of years. And so they want to bring them into this child's life. Is mm-hmm. that what they're trying to do? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, just like you would in any other uh, relationship, you know, um, once the, the parent feels comfortable mm-hmm. um, with bringing this bonus part this bonus mom or dad um into the family or to even meet the child start there just start there um at a a non-threatening environment you know like a play area and just see how your child responds and you that'll tell you a whole lot yes Mm -hmm. you know listen to your kid look at their body language Mm -hmm. um and you may have to you know if you feel like okay the first one went well Okay, let's do another one. Let's do this about like five or ten times. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So he, because he mentioned something about like he don't want his girlfriend to get jealous, and it was so funny because I was like, well, I think (laughs) we're gonna tell, we're gonna say this, tell the therapist this, but uh, if I'm dating a man with a child, I'm not gonna get jealous about him going to go visit his child, but. Since he's in a different state, like I don't, his child is in a different state. Yeah, she thinks that he gonna get down with his baby mama again. I guess I don't know. So maybe, like you're saying, you know, maybe he can take his girlfriend on the visit with his child if he's ready for that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To to yes, yeah, so not. so the the baby mama and the let me stop saying that. So the mother, and it's, child. Just, it's so sticky though. It's <laughs> like she's not a girl. I mean, she's not a wife. She's a girlfriend, and you know, what I'm maybe saying? they're on the road of becoming fiance. Like I'm not personally, you're not becoming my fiance, and you haven't met my child, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. So it, it's a step into the process. It's just so much. <laughs> yeah, and then are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then are they trying to, you know, what's the purpose? Like, are you trying to, you know, show this other person up? Or what? What is, you know, you know it's just saying? too many. There's right. too many. There's too much gray. It's too much. Yeah. Too much gray area. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, Call I, Maya. That's what you yeah, need. Yeah, we got to sort out the details. <laughs> yeah, it's too Not much. Not enough information. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, I sure gave him my advice. I was like, mm, she don't need to be getting jealous. You have a son and you but, need to see him. But like it's, like you said, you don't really know what <laughs> I know, else I know, I know, is involved. And why did they get a divorce in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Or well, I the, mean, his current girlfriend. Yeah, I'm just saying that could play a part. You know, he could be cheating on his current girl, girlfriend. That's why well, they we, don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why girlfriend don't want him to go because, shoot, you got me off of that. Who knows? You might, you know. Yeah. You just okay. never know. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just like, well, if I'm dating a guy that's got a child, I wouldn't want the child to suffer. Yeah. The child needs to see you. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> so basically, need more details. Sorry. Ho- hopefully she was able to. She gave you a little something, right? Uh <laughs> <laughs> get, I, I try. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely need more details. He's complex. Very complex situation. Yeah, that's a whole consultation. That's an hour <laughs> consultation. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we're wrapping it up here. Um, but I, I guess I still you did answer the question of just like where to begin step by step because I yeah. think a lot of people would be curious about that like what is the, just the first step of doing this, you know? And so you gave good advice about that. So last few things um any do you have any final words about anyone that could be like in the throes of like i'm just trying to you know get this family blended and adjusted you know Mm -hmm. any any Mm -hmm. positive words of advice to give them Mm -hmm. some hope (laughs) yeah absolutely um you know we were created to be in community and in family Mm -hmm. and so you don't you don't force a plant to grow Mm -hmm. you plant the seed and you water it. Yes. You give it sunlight or whatever it what it needs. Yes. You may need to put a little booster in the soil. That's yeah. that's a little extra love. Yeah. You know, and um, just allow it to naturally progress. Yes. Yeah. So, Maya, so for the for the people that are on the ball, you know, they balling on the budget. They got the income taxes <laughs> now, though. You know what I'm saying? But Change. they balling on the budget. <laughs> and, you know, they, they want to go into the direction of getting this therapy, but what, how, how, where can they see some prices or anything like that? Yeah, definitely go to lamfcc.com. All the prices are listed there and um, we got, you know, we can work with your budget, mm-hmm. you know, just look on, see. Go to the website. Go to Check the website. Out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, is there anything else that you want to tell the audience about your business? Yeah, so uh, basically, I can work with anybody worldwide. Mm. Um, it's coaching. So coaching and consulting, that's what LAMFCC stands for. It's LA Marriage and Family Coaching and Consulting. Mm-hmm. So it's not really so much therapy, or, although I do have the education background. Mm-hmm. I really want to work with people um, in the coaching modality to get them into action. Mm. Uh, so those are the that's the modality that I use and um, it's secure video conferencing so uh, you get if you were to contact me you get um, a link to your phone yes. um, to have your session once you have booked it yes. and uh, <laughs> right you gotta book it gotta book that session right. and um, and then we can just talk from you know, you can talk from your phone you know and and just we can work through those issues the so. power of technology that is so awesome isn't it yes yeah it's amazing yeah worldwide you know <laughs> you know and if you need me to kind of be a translator i can speak many languages you know uh no he <laughs> cannot he just says outrageous <laughs> ludicrous stuff all the time i rip a dirt you know <laughs> ni hao, you know i can i can say a lot of different things in in different countries i mean different languages so okay if all you right. need me you know well maya it has been a pleasure <laughs> it's been a you, joy you have educated us you have and I, I just really hope that you know people um listening to this episode and just know that there's hope for your blended family and just just be positive you know right. <laughs> be positive about it but we really appreciate you for coming on for sure and talking are you on ig about it. yeah i am um it is la 
marriage and family coaching. You could just if you just type in L.A. Marriage and family, mm-hmm. it'll, my, pop my picture, up. it'll pop up because nobody else has that. Yeah, <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all so much for having me on Loveology Podcast. It's for been sure. a joy. It has been. Thank you so much as well. All right. Well, that's, that'll wrap it up, man. I really appreciate y'all taking y'all time to listen to a, man, an awesome episode. This is a definitely, definitely an awesome episode. Uh, when you get a chance, uh, please rate and review. Go check out Maya. Go to her website, man. You might we, we might need to get a little coaching here and there because uh, you course, know yeah. I'm the I'm the MVP and I you know I need to uh, I need some I need need you to coach up my 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 uh, my secondary. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, yeah, we appreciate you guys. Remember, remember, it will be a live discussion on Wednesdays. And, you know, go to the website, loveologypodcast.com. We have apparel, all that good stuff. Check us out. We'll catch y'all next time. And peace out. You've been listening to the Loveology Podcast. Did you have fun with us today? Tell a friend about our show. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep the conversation going. Be sure to subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Visit us at loveologypodcast.com. Thanks for listening. Until next time, loveologists.